Hey everyone, it's Jim from Valves and More, an online vintage tube store. And today in Tube Lab number 99, we're going to talk about the benefits of new old stock tubes. But first, caution everyone, electronics and tube amplifiers can have very high voltages present, which can be lethal. Exercise extreme caution when working around them. Always consult a professional technician when in doubt. Okay, episode 100 is next Friday, and we're going to do a fun Q&A episode in which we answer your questions. Well, as many as we can get through. You've got one week left to put your questions in the comment section below. Okay, and to celebrate our 100th episode, we're going to have a flash sale next weekend, including some extra special deals. So don't miss out on that. So... What is an NOS, or new old stock tube? Well, that's a vintage vacuum tube that is brand new and was manufactured before about 1982. Now, some great manufacturers like Svetlana in St. Petersburg went all the way till about 2002. Others like Reflector in Saratov, Russia, just kept going but started making rebrands of famous audio tubes from the past. Okay, now in our store you'll see NIB or new in box and what that tells you is the new old stock tube has its original box. Now in many cases NOS tubes have lost their boxes due to poor storage or never had one if they came bulk packed, which was very common for all Soviet tubes and Western power tubes. Okay, let's take a look at some NOS NIB tubes and talk a little bit about the advantages of buying them, if you can find them. Now, about oh, over 90% of tubes that are actually available are going to be used, but occasionally we find uh, enough new old stock tubes to make up good sets and recently we made a huge order and we were lucky enough to get some in and that sort of spawned this conversation we're having but what really got the idea wedged into my brain was the other day I was sitting down I was listening critically to some music and I was reading a little bit at the same time now when I'm rolling when I'm when I'm listening to music I take advantage of that time to test customer tubes so, I often will pretest. So, I had rolled in a bunch of Sylvania 6SN7 GTBs, and I was just, just, just enjoying, enjoying a good book and enjoying one of my favorite concerts by Anwar Braham. And all of a sudden, I stopped reading. I said, Put the book down. This sounds amazing. I thought, what the heck's going on here? Why does why is my standard system sounding so different? And I thought, oh, you're testing the new old stock Sylvania 6SN7 GTBs. That's the difference. And I thought, okay, we need to do an episode. So, starting over here at the very beginning, we've got a fairly rare Sylvania 6SN7. Let me see if you can see the end. GTA straight plate version. This is the modern um, 6SN7, the first generation after the bad boy, the GT. So it's got a higher spec, it's got a lot of the Sonics, in fact the whole Sylvania family have this wonderful house sound, this warm rich sound that um, is... nobody else had it. I mean some people come close. Um, Sylvania had that warm sound, the richness, and some good detail. So, here's an original box. There we go. And this is such a rare tube that even though I only have one new old stock tube, um, but I'm always looking for more. I have actually hopefully some more coming in. And if I have matched pairs, they go into the store. So, in most cases with the GTA Sylvanias, you have to buy good used. Now, we'll look at a good used tube in a minute so you can see how they test. Now, this is the later version. This is the GTB Sylvania. 
and it's fairly similar but instead of straight plates it's got angled plates. The Sonics are quite similar. It's got that Sylvania house sound. It's not quite up to the GTA but it's really very close. So and the boxes even though they're a whole generation apart maybe two generations apart are very similar as well but they are a little bit different. Okay and actually this is the tube I was talking about that I was listening to that gave me the idea for this episode. Now take a look at these testing numbers. Typically on our tester, uh, which is a GM tester, the, um, the nominal Newell stock number can be anywhere from about 80 to about 110, sometimes even as high as 120 depending on the tube. 100 is considered sort of the center value. So because this is 8388, uh, does that mean it's not new old stock? No, it is, and it's actually testing within parameters, and it's fairly closely balanced. 97.97, that's really quite high for a 6SN7, and it's perfectly matched section-wise. Now, this is a used one. Now, this is actually a little bit earlier version. You can tell because it's got a fuller chrome dome. And it's also testing new old stock, but it is a used tube. It'll be sold as a used tube and priced, of course, accordingly. Um, now, just because somebody is listing a tube and says testing new old stock, that absolutely does not mean that it's a new old stock tube. What that means is that it's probably a used tube that's testing good. I don't like using that term. I think it's a bit deceiving. I really prefer to just call a tube what it is. So we have a general rule that says if, if a tube comes in and it's looking a little bit beat up, even if it's a new tube, it, goes, it gets kicked into the used se section. I don't, I don't ever want to sell a tube that's not looking new old stock. There are some rare exceptions, very old tubes from um, the Soviet Union from the 1940s and 50s. They, they look like they've been in the trunk of a ladder on back roads for the last 70 years. It's, it's just crazy how poorly they look after their new tubes. Anyways, and talking about Soviet tubes, here is one of my favorite budget 6SN7s. This is a Photon equivalent to the 6SN7 GTB, and we actually just got a new pile of these in, um, and Charles is testing them up. This is from 1964. These are wonderful tubes. For the money, they're fantastic. They've got really good detail. They do everything well. Um, and, you know, I, I, as a budget tube, I, I don't run premium tubes every day in my system. If I'm running a 6SN7, um, I'll just plug a pair of these in, and they just, they're great. Okay. Now, um, Charles is going to have some fun with what is definitely a new old stock, new in the box. I'll let him explain that to you. Okay, so we've got something a little bit fun here to play around with, and uh, I wouldn't exactly say new old stock, new in box, but maybe new old stock, new in can, because we've actually got a tube inside a metal can. Take a look at that. Of course, it's a 7N7, you know I love the Loctals, and we just had this come in on a recent order, so I saw it and I immediately thought, I don't want to open that, it's beautiful, but we want to open it. <laughs> we want to see what's inside of it. Take a look at that. This tamper-proof carton sealed at the factory for your protection. Uh, I don't know what they're protecting you from, but maybe protecting you from getting a bad tube in your system. So isn't that beautiful? So you'll see these pop up online. It looks like Zenith uh, sold them, uh, sold a number of different tube types in these little can cartons. And the way that you get into them is that there's actually a seal along this black strip. You can see right here, press thumbs here. So instead of doing that and making a mess of this, we're going to cut it open on camera here for you to, uh, to enjoy. And hopefully there's something interesting on the inside. So let's try not to make a mess of this. Yeah, and don't put any blood on my nice, <laughs> my nice little tablecloth there. Yeah. 
Well, that's not cutting quite as well as I expected it to. Uh, take your time. Yeah. Oh, there we go. We're through. All right. We don't do too many unboxings on this channel, but it's fun you know whenever what? we can do you something like this. You could probably stop at the corner and just fold it open. Oh, we can try. Uh, maybe not? No, maybe not. I don't want to tear it. Okay, I think that's going to be enough right there. Let's see. Oh, -ho. take a look at that. Okay, so there's the carton. Looks like it's cardboard with metal caps on it. Let's put that aside. And let's take a look at this wrapping here. So we've got a long list of patent numbers. You'll see that quite often. And a nice... RCA actually did that a lot with, with their packaging. They put their patent numbers all over the place. Aha. Uh -huh. well, let's see what we've got. Okay, well let's take a look at this first here. We've got a... Oh, I just tore it. So this is a manufacturer's... Oh, let's get it on camera. So it looks like this is a, a note for the date it was sold for the dealer. It looks like it's a sticker of some sort. But let's take a look at the tube. Ooh. And uh, this is actually a lot better than I was expecting. So this is a very, very early version of the 7N7. You can tell because it has the coated glass and the huge chrome dome on it that goes around evenly. Has it got its number on the cap? It has the number on the cap. There, let's clean that off a little bit and get it in focus. And for those of you that don't know, the 7N7 is the Loctal equivalent of? Of the 6SN7. And this specific version of it, being one of the earliest made, is actually very similar in construction to the 6SN7W, which is one of the very earliest military spec versions made. Very rare, very expensive. Yeah. So that's a really nice looking tube. There's a little bit of a uh, little bit of corrosion on the base, but nothing that we can't clean up, and uh, that looks really nice. So the carton did a good job of keeping this thing safe. So that, that there's a little bit of fun for you there. Okay. Well, thanks for braving the the knife on air there, Charles. <laughs> that's always a dangerous thing. So what um, when we were talking about new old stock new in the box tubes or new old stock bulk pack. What we're really talking about is the edge you're going to get sonically. Now, is every new old stock tube going to have an edge on every used tube of, let's say, similar type? No, they're not. But as an average, the very best version of the tube that you can find is going to be a new old stock version that has been tested and is testing nice and high and balanced. And the problem with this, of course, is that if you want to have your tube inventory all new old stock, you're going to have to be patient because there just aren't that many around out there. And for high demand tubes like the Slovenias and the Tongues, um, they many of them just sell as soon as they arrive in the store, they're gone. So you'll have to keep an eye on the store for that. But if I had the money, and I had the patience, um, and I was really into my music and did a lot of critical listening, I'd always go new old stock if I could find it. If I couldn't, I'd be happy with a high testing used version of the tube until I could find a new old stock version. Okay, so a lot of things came in this week. Let's get them all lined up here. Um, oh, yeah. I got this coming in too. Okay. No, we can't forget those. Don't forget these. I know, I almost forgot these. It's not that often we see a sleeve or partial sleeve of tongue cells. So, a whole bunch of the Svetlana 6550Cs came in, and they'll be in the store this weekend sometime. This is this is one of my most popular power tubes. Um, they go in the Wilsonton R8 sets. They're great sounding tubes. Uh, they're sort of a crossover between the drive and bass 
heavy KT88 and the warm, rich sounding EL34. It's sort of right in the middle. So you get a little bit of the warmth of the LA34s and you get quite a bit of the drive and bass of the KT88 type, um, which is why they're so popular, of course. And a whole bunch of Soviet equivalents, direct equivalents to the EL84 came in. I start with um, with the basic version. Now the number is the six six P one four P. That's in the English version. These are from 1977. Enough of these came in to make good uh, match quads. Nice high testing, good match quads, and the. Um, and everybody loves the sound of these. If you've got an EL84 amp, you've got to try these uh, Soviet-era EL84s. They just sound amazing. But have a look at this. You see, we've got a little bit of a smoke mark where the ventilation slots are in the plate. We've got sort of a little smoke mark on the inside of the plate. Some of them are heavier, some of them are lighter. And that's very common for this type of EL84. And what that is, is there's probably some stray, um, stray molecules in the tube when it was manufactured or uh, bits of finish on the actual surface of the plate or other components. And these tubes get hot. I mean, they get fry an egg twice over hot. <laughs> they get really hot, damn hot. So what happens is they get, they burn off. When you first, when you first find it, when you have a new tube, you won't see these marks, but when they start getting hot, they'll burn off whatever's in there. It'll come out through the slot and it'll color. It's not a sign of a defect, but it does let you know when these tubes are new old stock or when they're used. So that's handy. And these were all made by reflector. Now there's a couple of versions. This is the same tube, but with the dash K. Uh, which, Charles, what's the dash K mean? So the dash K means that it was made to be vibration resistant. That's right. But it's most people who use this tube say that it's the equivalent to the higher spec EL84, which is the 7193, I think, or 5, I forget. Anyways. And they, they uniformly, the dash Ks no, uniformly test higher than the standard version. So I can believe that it's a higher spec version of the tube. And here is another, yet another version, also made by Reflector, and that's the Dash EB. And Charles, E So the E stands for Extended Service Life, and that typically means that it was selected off of whatever tube line it was being produced on as a higher testing and better quality tube. So it's a select grade, and the B in Cyrillic is actually RV. Mm -hmm. And that means that it was built, uh, it has a different internal construction than the standard tube, and it was made to be more mechanically rugged and have better uh, noise and microphonics. Right. So a handful of these new old stock came in, and they're in the store as well. Um, these are fairly rare, um, but anyways, but I saved the best for last. Have a look at this sleeve. It's just beautiful. Anybody who's watched my channel for any length of time knows that I have, oh, half a dozen, maybe a dozen favorite tube types. And Tungsol is one of them, particularly their 6SN7s. And look at this. Charles actually pointed this out. This uh, signal or sine wave uh, actually just continues on through. It's the way they designed it. Anyways. Yeah, it's just a neat feature of it. So let's just look at one of the tubes. Now this is the 6SN7GTB and this is not the tall boy but the standard bottle version. Now you might be saying I really just want the tall boy. Well let me tell you, uh, about mm, a month ago I did some critical listening of the standard bottle size and wow, I think, now, you know, tube for tube sometimes you get, you know, a variation in production run, but the ones I was listening to, wow, they competed favorably with the tall boys. I was almost thinking I like them better. They're certainly very close. 
Uh, the differences are very small. It could actually be just a production variation that I was listening to. These are wonderful sounding tubes. These are new old stock, new in the box, new in the sleeve. That never happens with tongue saws. They're just, they didn't have high production numbers. And as a result, they're fairly rare. And of course, they are expensive. Okay, well, if you stay to the very end, here's some discount codes to help you out. Remember, we've got flat rate shipping around the world of $20. And if your order is $150 or more after discount, the shipping's on us. This is Jim. And Charles. From Bells and More, signing off. Have fun, everyone. Enjoy the last days of summer. We'll see you back here for episode 100. Cheers, everyone. <laughs>